So today we're going to set up the warmer um, mm -hmm. as if we were going to have a delivery happen. Okay. Um, the most important thing when you get down into the room is to make sure that the warmer is turned on. Okay. Because the baby does need radiant heat from the minute they come out. So your on-off power switch on this particular type of warmer mm -hmm. is over in the corner here. Okay. So when you activate it, do you want to come and have a look at it? It's right up here in the corner. So once you turn it on, it should be. Um, once it's activated, it'll go into a mode um, where this is radiant heat mm -hmm. coming from here. There also is a servo mode, which um, that's a facility that we use primarily when the baby comes up to the NICU. Um, but for now, we're just going to use manual mode. Um, and you will have it at 100%. Great. So you want it at the maximum heat, automatically it should start heating up. Okay. So, second thing, um, airway, always. This is your trusted friend, your bulb syringe. Um, what you will do is you'll open it and have it ready before the baby even comes out. Great. So if you want to open that up and put it to one side. I generally keep them at the top of the bed. Exactly. Very good. You have it right there and ready to go. The other thing that you will need is oxygen. Just make sure that your baby will have access to oxygen if they need it. Here is our bag. Okay. And uh, we're going to do a couple of things with this. Um, I'm going to practice giving a little bit of CPAP as well. So I'm going to turn your oxygen on. Now, it'll always be up to 10 meters so can you see it on the dial yes. right there and the majority of our babies are resuscitated at room air so even though you have this on you can see right now i'm at 60 mm percent -hmm. you're going to take that all the way back down to 21 which okay. is room air so babies will get resuscitated at 21 percent there is a difference dependent on gestational age but for now let's just go with 21. so yeah. looking at your bag um, you have your oxygen turned on up to 10 liters Make sure you got a good flow. You can hear it, it's pretty yeah. brisk. And then what I generally do, because I've got tiny hands, I find it hard to get a seal with a good mask. Okay. I actually seal it off here. And what I like to do prior to the delivery is make sure that I've got my CPAP set. So if you can see here on the dial, so I like to try and have a CPAP of at least five. Mm -hmm. So if you want to try that and make the adjustment, because when the baby comes out to get resuscitated, you don't want to be giving a baby a CPAP of 15. Okay. So assuming that you've got a good seal, your first CPAP is going to be about five. Now, if you want to try practice this, giving pressure, you see you can go from five to 20 pretty quickly. So just try that right now. Yeah. Good. Okay, so your bag is ready. Good. So we've got one, two, and the third thing. What do you think the third thing is? Our suction. Exactly. So suction is your third thing. You really need to make sure that your suction is all set up and ready to go. There's two pieces to the system. So there's two pieces that you need to turn on. I'm looking at this setup right now and I can identify straight away we're not going to have a good vacuum on this. So first thing I do is I make sure that everything is sealed properly on here. I turn on at the wall right here. So there's an on off switch at the back. So I've turned on phase one of the suction. The second thing that I need to do is I need to turn on my manometer as well. Now once I turn this on, what we should be seeing is that our suction is defaulting to somewhere between 80 and 100 millimeters of mercury. So if you look at the manometer, you're looking for between 80 and 100. If, you, if it's not set up to that, which sometimes it is not, you need to adjust it. So you make your adjustments here. So I've made my adjustment. Let's check to see that the suction is actually working. So if I put suction on the very end, yes, there we go. And we have established suction between 80 and 100. So your suction is set to go. You will need a suction catheter as well. The catheters are kept in the drawer underneath the bed. And I generally will go for an eight French catheter. That's the largest one that we have. So we have an eight French catheter right here. 
Um, obviously, if you're getting a smaller baby, you might need to reconsider the size of the suction that you're using. So open it up. No harm in opening it up and being ready to go. Attach it on here. You hear your suction device and have it at the back of the bed ready to go, especially if you're expecting to intubate the baby because we will need to clear that airway before we introduce our ET tube. So there we have it. We have three things set up, ready to go for our delivery. Our bed is on, it's become nice and warm. Baby's going to come over to a warm table, which is a great thing. We have our bag set up for our oxygen. We have our bulb at the bedside and we have our suction catheter all set to go. Points to note. Prior to each delivery, sanitize your hands and wear gloves. Ideally, your arms should be bare below the elbows. Assign roles and responsibilities to team members. Perform your equipment checks and know where the code cart is. Know the location of your laryngoscope, endotracheal tube and stylet. Where time allows, introduce yourself to the family and OB staff and update them following any resuscitation and stabilisation of the infant. And remember, call for backup early if you need it.